Professor Dave and Chegg here, there are many different types of chemical reactions that we must learn about, and here is a very important one. This is an oxidation-reduction reaction, usually called a redox reaction for short. These involve some important terminology, so let's get a closer look. Let's take a look at the following reaction. Sodium metal and chlorine gas combine to form sodium chloride, or table salt. In this process, sodium atoms will lose one electron to form sodium ions, and chlorine atoms each gain one electron to form chloride ions. These processes can be illustrated by half reactions for these substances. From these half reactions, we can see that all that is really happening is electron transfer, and this is what is referred to as an oxidation reduction reaction, or a redox reaction. In a redox reaction, one substance will be oxidized, which means that it loses electrons, and one substance will be reduced, which means that it gains electrons. In this example, sodium has been oxidized and chlorine has been reduced. It may be confusing to associate reduction with a gaining of electrons, so think of it as a reduction of charge. Neutral chlorine atoms become 1 minus chloride ions, so the charge has been decreased or reduced. In addition, we want to understand that the substance that is oxidized is the reducing agent, because it facilitated the reduction in the other substance. And the substance that is reduced is the oxidizing agent, because it facilitated the oxidation in the other substance. If you like, you can remember the mnemonic oil rig, whereby oxidation involves losing electrons, and reduction involves gaining electrons. Now let's learn how to assign oxidation numbers to a substance. These are sort of like electrical charges, but they aren't actually formal charges. They just describe the way electrons are arranged around an atom. Here are the rules for assigning oxidation numbers. One. Elements have oxidation numbers of zero, while monoatomic ions have oxidation numbers equal to their formal charge. Two, hydrogen is typically plus one, except in hydrides where it is minus one. Three, oxygen is typically minus two, except in peroxides where it is minus one. Four, halogens are typically minus one. And five, the sum of the oxidation numbers in a neutral molecule must add up to zero. Or, for a polyatomic ion, they must add up to the formal charge on the ion. Let's now use oxidation numbers to examine a redox reaction. Take this one here, where elemental iron reacts with oxygen to form iron 3 oxide. On the left side, we have two elements, so these will both be zero. Then, on the right, as we said, oxygen is almost always minus 2. Then, this compound must have numbers that add up to zero. There are three oxygens, so that adds up to minus six. And there are two irons, so they must each be plus three, which makes sense as that is the oxidation state of these ions. That means that iron has lost electrons, so it has been oxidized. And oxygen has gained electrons, so it has been reduced. That also means that oxygen is the oxidizing agent, which makes sense. And iron is the reducing agent. Once again, we are just recognizing which element had its oxidation number increase and which one decreased, as this tells us everything. We should be able to do this for any compound, even polyatomic ions, like the permanganate ion here. What is the oxidation number on manganese? Well, oxygen is minus two, and there are four of them, which adds up to minus eight. The whole ion has a minus one charge, so manganese will have to be plus seven, to get from minus eight to minus one. Fortunately, assigning oxidation numbers really is that simple, and once we can do that, we should be able to assign all of the components of any redox reaction. This is an important type of reaction that will show up again later when we learn about electrochemistry. Professor Dave for Chegg. See you next time.